Nicholas Grossman, international relations professor at the University of Illinois, senior editor of Arc Digital, is joining us live from Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Now, Biden has squarely blamed former President Donald Trump. The deep divisions have been brought to fore yet again. What can you tell us about this? Well, the biggest problem thing that is dividing people so much on this is not a dispute over opinions or of political preferences, but a dispute over factual reality that uh, Donald Trump is lying, that there was a lot of voter fraud that somehow changed the election and he's making it up. And uh, Joe Biden and various Democrats are saying, no, that's not true. Joe Biden won the election fairly, which is what all the various uh, audits and reviews of different state elections have gone through. And similarly, uh, Trump has said, that the attack on the U.S. Capitol was, he's tried, well, a variety of things to try to change what the story was. And so for people who look at that and saw it on television and saw that it was Trump supporters attacking Congress to try to prevent the peaceful transfer of power, they can abide by the lies. And it is impossible to recognize a worldview that is based on fiction and a worldview that is based on fact. And I'm not right. sure how people can bridge that. Absolutely. Now, with that, Trump has also planned to launch his own social media application called Truth Social. What do you make of that? Well, I, at first, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. So he has at various times proposed different business ventures, and uh, they were fairly empty. This is what a, he made a lot of his business career out of. For example, uh, Trump University, in which he sold people sham classes and uh, later got sued and had to settle with people for conning them. Uh, so um, I would believe it when it comes out. Um, there are a couple of Twitter alternatives, uh, sites Parler, Gab, Getter. These all are trying to be Twitter, primarily for people who get kicked off of or don't want to be on Twitter. So this one would most likely if it does actually come to fruition, be a competitor for those, as opposed to hmm. something that could uh, get into Twitter's dominance of that market. All right. Now, also looking ahead, President Joe Biden has endorsed national efforts to enact election reform. We also have been seeing former President Donald Trump revving up operations ahead of the midterms in 2020 for presidential elections. How do you see this impacting the situation going forward? Most likely, the attempts to do some sort of voting rights bill or voter reform are not going to work, at least not going to work to the level of ambitions that Democrats are proposing at the moment. The reason why is simple. The Democrats don't have the votes to get it through in Congress. The U.S. The Senate has a law, uh, has a rule, sorry, an internal Senate rule called the filibuster, which requires the way it's being used currently requires 60 votes as opposed to 50 as opposed to a majority. And to change that rule would require 50 votes and the Democrats don't seem to have it. So most likely the laws that are in place that are either going to uh, potentially make it more difficult for some people to vote in states uh, will stay in place. And things like gerrymandering, where uh, people draw districts to try to get it so that the uh, representatives have safe elections for certain parties will likely not be changed either. And so therefore, the U.S. is probably going to go into 22 without any changes. An open question will be whether the Congress or others can change some of that in time for 2024 for the next presidential election. Absolutely. Well, uh, Mr. Nicholas Grossman, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.